Okay, I um, I call you Robert. Um, how do we? How long do we know each other, Robert? Christian, we have known each other for a long time. I think it goes back eight years, nine years. Can yeah. I remember? Okay, so this is. This is the foundation on which this interview goes. The trust we we already have to each other. Yes. Right? Right. So this is very important that everybody who sees this video, um, this interview is built on trust. Have you ever been in prison as a political prisoner? Yes. How long? Several times. One time we were locked up in Bermenda. We locked up in Kumba. We locked up in Boya. We were temporarily held in Manfe, but that did not last long when locked up for like one week. In your opinion, what is the history of the conflict? One country with no claim of ownership wants to steal another country. East Cameroon, French Cameroon, La Republic, whatever you call it, is a geographical entity with known and recognized international boundaries. West Cameroon the Southern Cameroons, Ambazonia, is another geographically defined entity recognized within time and space, recognized with its own boundaries within international law, is another country. The difference between French Cameroon and Ambazonia, or the southern Cameroons, is that French Cameroon gained external recognition. In other words, it was registered at the United Nations as an entity. Ambazonia, or the southern Cameroons, had not gained external recognition, in other words, sovereignty. But we had internal sovereignty. We had an internal government. In other words, we were already existing as a state. East Cameroon gained its external recognition in 1960, 1st January 1960. In other words, she was identified as a country. 1st January 1960. That did not include the southern Cameroons. It did not include Ambazonia. To this date, French Cameroon, La République du Cameroon, whatever you call it, does not have one proof, a piece of paper anywhere on this God's earth that shows that the boundaries she inherited at her independence somehow metamorphosed to include the southern Cameroons. Let's assume a country is like a tree 
when that tree gains maturity, a branch does not stay back to start producing fruits one year after the other one started. Once that whole tree gains maturity, every part starts flowering. How come if La Republic claims today that Ambazona is part of it, how come she gained independence? First January 1960. And the Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia had to gain her own supposedly independence one year after. That is the first clear distinction. The second thing, let's go back into the archives. During the Second World War, you had the English and the French forces that liberated the German territory, Cameroon. The English forces were fighting from Nigeria and the French forces fought from La, La Republic. Let's go back to those boundaries that were established. For example, the Buddha Accord. Let's go back. If we were one country, why were these boundaries established? We know today where those boundary marks are. To answer your question in short form, the historical aspect of this war, La Republique du Cameroon, a black African country, is colonizing the southern Cameroon's Ambazonia. Let me make this point very clear to everybody listening to this video. What angers us, the Ambazonians, the most is that the East Cameroonians are inferior. They are inferior intellectually, culturally, morally to us the Ambazonians. Can I tell you something, Chris? Please. The first territory in the whole of black Africa where elections were held, the opposition defeated the ruling government. Both leaders sat at a club and shared a mock of beer was in the southern Cameroons. Respect. That was way back in 1954, when Foncha, that's, I'm talking about our internal government, mm -hmm. when Foncha defeated Endele, they sat at the mountain club, Boya, shook hands. That had not happened anywhere on the black African country, continent. So this conflict is boiling a very long time under the lid in a pot. Yes. And um, when did it start to get so serious that you went into hiding? Way back in 2011, we wanted to celebrate our Independence Day, 1st of October that's when we are supposed to have gained independence. The East Cameroon thugs, you call them soldiers, I call them thugs. Don't excuse my blanketing term. It's okay. They wouldn't allow us. Things that have boiled over there and it's just that some of us with cooler heads managed to hold down the lead. But then we knew very well, as time goes on, the population is becoming more educated, more agitated. 
you may deliver your son or your daughter, but you cannot determine what's in his or her mind. Most of the children who are in the bush now, you'll be shocked to know they are very educated. I'm not talking about literacy. I'm talking about being educated. They know exactly what is theirs. The old people sat there. It's unfortunate instead of fighting because they are in the uh, sunset years, instead of fighting for the generation of grandchildren because they've got nothing to lose. Unfortunately, they are taking sides with your appraisal. That's what beats my imagination. But one thing I say, to go back to your question, yeah, I think started born in 2011. Okay. So which means, um, how long have I have not been in your house? <laughs> That's a very long question. Three years now. Three years. Have you any imagination how your neighborhood looks like? Yeah. Yeah. All the houses have been burned. Ashia. I'm not seeking for. I'm not asking for sympathy. Who, who burns the houses? Yeah. That's a good question. And why? You see, riffraffs have come up to excuse their crimes, blaming the burning of houses and property onto the restoration forces. Let's look at this very objectively. The burning of houses in a whole village. It's not only a quarter, it's a it's village. It's not a quarter, a village. You cannot have the restoration forces who belong to a village. That's where they were born. That's where they have their grandfather, their grandmothers. That's where their roots are. Which means this is a statement. Of course, you cannot go back to burn your roots. Yeah. The soldiers came out of frustration because they came out to face the restoration forces. They pick up frustration in two ways. The restoration forces, once emanc emancipated, to know that they can overcome the military, they can kill the military too. When they kill a soldier, the soldiers go into frustration and start burning down things because they cannot see the restoration forces. They ask the poor inhabitants to show where they are. They do not know where they are. They take out their anger on them. Christian, some of the high, sorry, some of the pictures are hideous. You will not love to see them. Yeah. What is the situation now? What is the present situation? I'm afraid to tell you this. But I must tell you. The regime in East Cameroon is silently killing the people of the Southern Cameroons. He's been emboldened by the silence, the deafening silence from the international community. Every day, every day, without the least bit of exaggeration. I'm telling you, every day, a minimum of half a dozen to a dozen, 15, 20 people are killed all over Ambazonia. 
every single day. Now, they are carrying out this genocide under the watchful eye of the international community. You've got this fellow at the United Nations. He calls himself the Secretary General. He is in absolute complicity with the government in Yaoundé. I love him to know this, whether he turns his eye against the Southern Cameroons, we will come up one day as a nation. This tragedy was brought onto us because of the vacuum that was created at the United Nations with the death of Dak Hamajold. He pretends today that nothing is happening in the southern Cameroons in Ambazonia because France is paying him, I don't know how much. East Cameroon is paying him and other cohorts around him. Let him know that we are fully aware of that. That guides me to the next question. How does a successful vision look like? Do you really want to know? Yes, please. Good. A successful vision will be when we stand up there at the pu pu public square in Boya and we see our children marching up the streets. We will not be firing guns of celebration in the air. We will be carrying branches of trees marching all over Ambazonia, thanking God for the liberation, the ultimate liberation is given us. And those branches will signify what our nation, the Federal Republic of Ambazonia, stands for. We will be a peace-loving nation. But make no mistake. The fact that we prefer peace, that we love peace, doesn't mean we cannot fight to defend ourselves. I understand you very well. Very, very well. Thank you. And how does a compromise look like? What do you mean, a compromise? A compromise means... That we are going to compromise our stance? No. A compromise means that the United Nations make a media meditation. Mediation. Mediation. Yep. Uh, on one table side you have East Cameroon and on the one table side you have Cam Ambazonia. And then maybe they say, okay, the present flag of Cameroon has only one star. It became a second star, maybe. And... You are an independent federal state mm -hmm. beside East Cameroon. Is mm -hmm. this a compromise where you can live with? Okay. If I read you right, you mean we go back to existing together like one unit? Whatever name you call it? Mm. No. You know what? Forget it. So no compromise. That will not work. We have lived with these people. Mm -hmm. We've done everything we can. We have... Look, we've compromised to breaking point. What haven't we given up? Christian, let me tell you. We sat down and worked out a document. Maybe you guys don't know. There is a document. It's called the BPI. That is the Boya Peace Initiative. Mm -hmm. Within this document, we have spelled out the terms of separation. Clean and clear. If these guys were gentlemen, if the East Cameroonians were gentlemen, they would have listened to the complaints that are being sent, had been sent to them a long time ago. Every time they ignored, every time they ignored, whatever. Chris, 
let me tell you. When we were still growing up, we were still starting in the struggle. And up to today, my personal opinion, should I give it to you? Please. An East Cameroonian, a good East Cameroonian is a dead one. If you walked into your room and found an East Cameroonian lying on your bed, side by side with a serpent, do you know what you should kill first? The East Cameroonian. That sentiment goes deep in me. And 99% of the Southern Cameroonians, of the Amazonians, share that sentiment. Okay. So if you're thinking of any negotiation, any form of ending this conflict, and you're based on the fact that we, we could exist again as one people, you're absolutely wrong. We are ready to fight for that, against that particular notion to the last man. Robert, have you any last word, last sentence, last, what you like to give to the people who view this video? Yes. Please, share it with us. This is very important. I know many people, and I don't blame them, they have this impression from the experience in other parts of the world. This idea of warlords, that there are so many leaders, so many groups bearing arms in the southern Cameroons. Uh, if peace is granted now, the southern Cameroons will degenerate, and as you know, will degenerate into a war-torn place like the south of Sudan. That is absolutely baseless. Oh, okay. Okay. That is absolutely baseless. Okay. They do not know the dynamics of this conflict. How will a, law, a warlord in Manfe, because they feel that he's in Manfe, so he's going to claim the Manfe territory, That is a lie. The warlord in Bansa is going to become a warlord in Bansa. That is a lie. We all know what holds us together. We all know that. Let nobody. I refuse to go into details about that. But let me give them a hint. You have Bansa boys fighting with the restoration forces in Manfe. Okay. And you have that, that interchange. So you do not have Manfe fighting with Manfe, no. We mix up. That is what the East Cameroon government cannot break. That's our backbone. So when the time comes, Our boys, the main thing will be to resettle them. If the international community wants to help this young baby, this young nation, let them come. Help us resettle our mothers who are in the bushes. Chris, do you know how many people have died? Some people say 4,000. For what? That's a dangerously conservative figure. That is too low. Make some people who want to assist us go back into your comfort zone. What's four thousands? No. I'm not exaggerating. Some people who've tried to get some data, like the Catholic Church in Bansal. In Bansal alone, it's more than four thousands. Which means altogether over ten. It's over fifteen thousand, getting to twenty thousands. Like yesterday, four corpses were lying down, not a stone throw from here. Nobody counted that. Last week or so, 
the fox you call soldiers. When burnt house went on the rampage and burnt houses in Akumi in Santa all over. Can you count the number of people who were killed? You could only see the ones who were burnt alive. What about those who were shot to go and die from gunshot mm. wounds and all that? Mm. Do you count that? Nobody is counting. Nobody is counting. Can you imagine? In three years, we've lost close to 24, 25,000 people. And the death toll is going up. This is one thing the international community should know. They are not only carrying out human genocide, they are effectively and actively carrying out economic genocide. They go to the main cities, they, live, they appear to leave things intact. They go to the suburban areas, to the outlying smaller, and wipe out people, wipe out all economic activity. An example is this. Bother Google Bansaw, for example, no, it's come to nothing. The farmers who used to farm beans, corn, graze their cattle and all, they're not there anymore. This is another thing that is coming. Hunger. The people, it's not only bands, all the outlying villages, the villagers cannot go back to carry out their farming. Some have run into the towns. They are being chased. Those who've gone into the forest, they are being chased and killed in there. Nobody stays to farm. The little seeds they have, which had to be planted, they've eaten that up. This is a looming disaster that the world is watching. Why, why is the world so cold-blooded? Why do they love the smell and sight of blood? They want to see kids dying from malnutrition and all that, all shrink it up before they start running around? Where is preventive diplomacy? I thought this is what Reagan, Ronald Reagan instigated way back in the 80s. It is cheaper and easier to execute preventive diplomacy much easier and cheaper than going to resolve conflicts. So these fellows are carrying out economic genocide. They're killing us and killing all our business activities. As a last word, let nobody. It's good to have a negative picture of what may come out. Having this vision of uh, Solomon Camerons or Ambazonia torn apart by warlords, it's good to have that picture so we can guard against. But I'm saying this that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The so called warlords are just fellows who are able to assist. And the fact that the boys on the ground, their allegiance to them doesn't mean they are going to turn against their own brothers with whom they've been fighting in the trenches when freedom has come about. No. No. We all have one goal. And we are far more mature morally, culturally, to de degenerate into that after all these years of suffering. Even the Israelites had dissensions among themselves. Why do, why do people think we, the Ambazonians, shouldn't have that among ourselves? We are all human. Thank you. Let the world come and help us. Those people who are aiding our enemies, we will remember. And we tell the people in East Cameroon, we are condemned to live together as neighbors, as members of the whole, I mean, a whole African continent. 
as members of humanity because we are all human. We've got one destiny, the human destiny. We will always be neighbors. Let them not push this thing too far. Please, let them think again. We will find a way to remember that not all the East Cameroonians persecuted us. If the Jews could have somewhere in their hearts to forgive what Hitler did to them, why not us? Because the Germans are good people, but they had a horrendous lead leader in Hitler that persecuted the Jews. I'm sure one of the strongest allies of Israel today is Germany. So, we are mature enough to know that not all the East Cameroonians hate us, the Amazonians. This is all I say. Let the East Cameroonians, let the world find a way, intervene. Do, let's not allow this thing degenerate much further than it already has. Thank you. My people are dying every day. Chris, tell whoever is listening in his or her own little way, help us. We are a rich nation. We have the resources. We are very rich. We have offshore oil deposits that are being exploited now. The onshore deposits have not even been started. The, explo the exploitation hasn't yet started. That's not all. We are rich in human resources. We are an intelligent set of people. I'm sure you should know that, Chris. I remember your universities are very famous. Yes. But the East Cameroon, uh, the East Cameroon government has come and messed it up because all what they know is fraudulence. It's unfortunate that attitude is permeating into, into West Cameroon. I can tell you that. We are a sound, educated, hard-working people. That's where you start. If you go around the world, some of the prominent brains are from Amazonia, from West Cameroon. They are just quiet out there because they, can, they cannot come back here. Let's gain our independence. You'll be shocked. Give us a dozen years after independence. Just a dozen years. I may not be there, Chris. I pray you, you I mean, you, you, you will still be there. You will come one day. And Thank you, Robert, for this interview. I'm very touched. Oh, Chris. Thank you to my friend. Please, you. Go back home safely. All I can say is fair winds, stout hats. Glad you came here. Thank you. Not many of you dare to come out here. Thank you. Give my regards to your family. Thank you. Pray for us. I pray for you people. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for watching this video. Mm -hmm.